He, uh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's going to the, uh, they're going to buy up the John Berkeley series at yes. Trial of the Time Board. That's a, a waste of time. I don't want to buy that. I know. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> but we're hoping maybe right. the year after that we'll be able to pick up the older episodes. Yes. Uh, at Trial Much disagree on you know that everybody says all the early shows were so boring. Oh, no, no, oh, let brilliant. me stick you a Patrick Trotton episode in. You've brilliant. never seen the Mind Robber. I, oh, I brilliant. love the Mind Robbers. Uh, that that the Dominators are my two favorite. The uh, Dominators. Shown again tomorrow, currently. The I Dominators would, uh, is one of the dullest shows I've ever seen. I think so too. Life. They kept on, um, they kept on, it underran the script, and they kept on having to write new scenes. And all they could think of was that the dominators kept on saying, we've got to conserve the power. Yes. And they must have said that about 20 times. <laughs> I always remember that. Really, the best moment in the dominators, I think, was your, your closing. I mean, what are you doing then? Uh, at the end where uh, you're, you're pretty you're much slapping yourself on the back saying, don't worry, Jamie, the, the, the explosion will only be a regional explosion. It'll only affect the island. Maybe that's so, but we're still on the island. Oh, yeah. oh my word! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Are they still coming in? There are a couple of stragglers. We ran that for our... It's only for I gotta wait another club. couple of minutes. Yeah. We ran that for our state club for and they got a pitcher of water for you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the funniest moments I've working one thing at a time. I would like to see that tomorrow. I think I should go in and watch that. <laughs> I haven't seen the Dominators since um, I, I did it. Oh, no. 20 years ago. <laughs> what we'll do if we we'll just walk down around the back over there. Or do you just want to walk, gonna the walk down the front? Good idea. I ain't going to come down the front. I'm going to walk around the back. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I, I heard that Pertwee was going to surprise you on stage. <laughs> That'll be the day. <laughs>
give you an answer. Uh, <clears throat> for a start, hands up people who actually see me at this show. Everybody nearly, oh, that's a great help anyway. <laughs> and uh, they're going to show some of the, my shows tomorrow. And I'm going to watch them because I haven't seen them for anyone first. <laughs>
it was an appalling mistake by somebody. Um, I think it was just, um, you know, one of the cleaners thought he'd tidy up a bit, and he chucked him in the dustbin. I think that's what happened. And it was a terrible shame because, uh, see, nobody in those days realised what was going to happen to Dr. Wood, either in, uh, in England or in this country, especially not in this country. And um, I just don't know. I wish somebody had told me. Perhaps they'll come to life one day. Perhaps some of my fans have got something secret. Another question, please. Come along, come along. Oh, here's one. Here's one. You have a reputation as being a bit of a practical joker during the series. Did you ever pull one on Nicholas Port, the man who played the Brigadier? Practical joker. <laughs> Did I ever play a joke on Nicholas Corbyn? No, I don't think I did. <laughs> oh, Nick Courtney, you know. <clears throat> we, mm, yeah, you see, Nick Courtney and I, um, we hadn't really acted together very much in any of the stories. I think the first one, and you all put me right over this, I think the first one was The Web of Fear, wasn't it? Or was it the first story? Um,
But I did once do a uh, improvisation on the day, which wasn't received with any enthusiasm by the music. It was in um, the first Yeti one. And um, I'm tied up outside the monastery. Has anyone seen this as bait for the, for the yet abominable sermon? Anyone seen that? Yeah, good, that's, that's fine. Well, you know what I mean. And I'm chained up outside, and these things come plodding along, or this one comes plodding along. And they have these silver spheres in their chests, which were homing devices. They weren't uh, animals at all, they were machines. And they were homing on me, this particular one was. And um, what happened was, the actual silver sphere would go ahead of them and in through the gates of the monastery uh, to where I was. And the yeti would follow, you see, <coughs> following the silver sphere. Anyhow, here comes this yeti following the silver sphere. And uh, here am I, tied up outside. And he comes along, and for some unknown reason, he stops just as he gets to me and sort of looks in the air, listens, and he turns around and he goes back again. And uh, I couldn't resist it. I said, oh, he only came back to get his ball. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like that at all. <laughs> the control room was blue. That was the only time I ever improvised on the show. Except when one, um, when one dried up, you know, when Fraser and I got muddled up with a scene or something like that, um, we never let on that uh, we got off the script, that we forgot who the hell was saying what to who. Uh, we used to go on, you see, because when you're working with one person all the time, you get, to, you get able to do that, you get able to write live very easily with that person. And on one occasion, I think it was in Space Pirates, uh, we went on and on and on for about a minute and a half. And suddenly, there was a little voice from the control room saying, What page are you on? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we left the script about, oh, a minute and a half ago, you know. We were just carrying on, seeing when they'd, uh, <laughs> when they'd savvy. <laughs> so that was fun. But normally speaking, you can't doubt it once the um, script is out for the vision mixer. Um, because um, otherwise the show, all the scenes, all the shots go wrong, you see. Yes, any more? Or any more? Yeah, 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 yeah darling, in the front there, yes. Yeah. That's the oh. <coughs> Right, what have we got? What was it like to uh, work on the Oven with Gregory Peck? What was it like to work on the Oven with Gregory Peck? It was great. Um, <coughs> I went up for that to play the part of um, the chap in um, the Middle East, the archaeologist that was played by someone else <laughs> uh, in the end. And I read the part to Richard John. And um, I said, I don't like this part much. Like, can I read the other part, part of the piece? So I said, yeah, yeah, read the other So I read it. And I, I read it. It was written in Italian. I mean, it was with an Italian accent. But I turned it into Irish because I thought, you know, Roman Catholic priests are all Irish, aren't they? <coughs> anyway, I turned it to Irish, and he was both of He thought this was just the greatest thing. And um, he, he cast me there and there. So that was very nice. Uh, one got off on the right foot, you know. <coughs> but then meeting Mr. Peck was super. I didn't know what he was like. But he's very ordinary, nice, quiet, normal guy. And um, anyone can talk to him, and he got no sight at all. He was lovely, and very easy to act with because he's very good, isn't he? very natural. Um, he has a trick <clears throat> on his script. Um, he's got against all his speeches, or well, not all his speeches, but some of his speeches. He's got N-A-R. Do you know this story? No. no? Good. Uh, anyway, he writes down N-A-R, 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 you see. And I, we were going through a scene, as one does, sitting down, you know, 
before you start rehearsing it. And I have seen this and I said, what's, what's this in uh, our business? He said, oh yeah, well that's some no acting required. <laughs> I said, I, I was <coughs> put down an hour and I know I haven't got to act that particular speech. <laughs> that was nice too. It made you feel friendly. <laughs> so that was good. No, you did lovely to work with. Absolutely lovely. And it was a great privilege. And I can name drop where he's concerned now. <laughs> the only other folk I worked work with was Alan Ladd um, in movies, you know, big movies. In the Black Knight. Anyone seen the Black Knight? No. Yes, one person seen the Black Knight, two people. That was with Alan Ladd. He played um, a nice in arm, <laughs> which was very unlikely. There we are. <clears throat> that was quite good fun too, looking back. Another question. So, ah, I know where you're from. It's where I'm going. Yeah.
two doctors? Because I turned into one. That's why I liked it. I got the taste of human flesh. I was delicious. Absolutely delicious. <coughs> Can't wait to be an Amigon again. Marvellous. They've lost my eyebrows on that. In, uh, we went to Spain. For the filming. Seville. We were going to come to New Orleans. Yeah, you know all this, don't you? It's all stale. Never mind. We were going to come to New Orleans, and uh, oh, the money went wrong, something went wrong. So we went to Seville. I use 
stuff these so much. When you were doing the show, did you yeah. ever have a script or a production scene at the time that went terribly wrong with cameras going every which way or a monster that didn't work? Um, not that I can remember. No, the question is, did anything, uh, did we have a script where on the day, presumably, everything went wrong? Monsters didn't work and uh, that sort of thing. I don't think so. Most of the um, tricky stuff was done on film, you see. We used to do it on telecine in, uh, in black and white, uh, the actual show in the studio. But the, uh, the, the special effects were mostly done on film, which we used to do at evening studios as a separate thing before we, uh, well, we used to do that on weekends. That was our weekends, you know, we didn't get the time off. Anyhow, to begin with. And um, so it was easier uh, to do. There was less possibility of things going wrong when you're doing it on film. You know, you've got it in the can and that's that. But there were occasions uh, in the studio where monsters caught fire. Uh, I remember Cybermen catching fire. Uh, they had to. I think one side of the man had to be shot at or uh, something like that and destroyed and they had special effects in his chest and uh, before the moment came he started smoking <laughs> and the poor man he was just getting hotter and hotter and they had to drag him out of this panic station that was very nasty that uh, that happened a couple of times he had to be very careful it's very difficult to get out of those side of the costumes in a hurry um, don't get even zipped up once you're in it, you're in it. So that's quite alarming, really. But that's the only time I can really remember. As I say, most of them were on a film, so that those sort of things wouldn't happen. Yes. Come along now. You want to ask me a question? You want to go outside? <laughs> okay, darling. Anyone else? Yeah. So. <clears throat> Hello. Hi, I. Fine. Good. I'd like to know if you've ever still played the recorder for pleasure, if that was something you did only for the show. I never play the recorder for pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I do play it uh, only when it's dragged out of me at conventions. Oh, I enjoy it. That's the answer to that question. Uh, so I think we should leave it there. Um, my small son. Uh, aged about seven, who was at primary school, when I uh, was rehearsing for the first uh, episode, first story, you don't call them episodes, we call them episodes, you know, the first half hour show. Uh, I wanted something which would relate to the kids as well as to the grown ups. And I had this young family at the time, so I asked them for ideas. And they were both playing a recorder at school, much better than I could, incidentally. And um, so my son Mark, I think this has gone off, isn't it? <coughs> my son Mark said, why don't you play the recorder? Uh, I said, you know, I can't play the recorder. He said, I'll teach you. So he taught me um, the little tune that um, uh, they were doing at school. It was called The Otter and the Toad, as far as I remember. Went trotting down the road. <laughs> and um, he took this and blew me down. The director thought it would be a bad idea because, you know, we were trying to create a sort of whimsy straight away uh, with the character to cut right away from the building, make a contrast, which was disaster to give because nobody really liked it. But they, they got used to the best one. And I've got a bit better at doing it. I don't think recall I've been playing with you. Um, so, I watched it in the first episode and it, uh, it came off quite well, really. But um, every time uh, I played it, I had to learn this little bit I was going to do. And that was something that might have gone wrong very easily in the, in the tape, you know. And if it did, then I'd have to do it again. But um, I'm glad it was asked me to play it because um, uh, <laughs> They all want me to play it. <coughs> no, go oh, right. Um, <laughs> it so happened. <laughs> and I will say, at great expense, <coughs> uh, the first tune that I had to play, and it was just as 
did I know? I, I, um, I can't remember whether I grew that. I might have done. Did I really have sideburns and things? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have all that again. As Lord's Chamber. Very good and very exciting. 
friendly, poor out girl, they live together and the question the boy wants to get married, the girl doesn't want to get married yet, you know that. And the boy keeps on coming to me to ask for advice. And I give him <laughs> what advice I can. <coughs> so that's going to be good too. So those are the two two things, I think. Um, maybe three. And then of course you'll get vanity fair, which we haven't started. Well they're halfway through shooting, but I don't join it till um, Wednesday. What's the day today? Friday. I don't know on Wednesday in England. That's April Fool's Day. Pardon? That's April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day, she points out. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, we do the first reading of the last five episodes then. And it'll all be cooked by, well, we finished shooting on July the 21st. And it should be edited, I should think, by about October, November. And you should get it over in your master, master class in, what's it called? Master Masterpiece Theatre. Yeah, that. Yeah. That'll come there, I think. It's one of the BBC classics, you know. So, um, that's another thing you're going to get. So, ain't you lucky? Any more questions? Last question. One more question. You want to ask a question, come to mind. <laughs> you want to ask a question? He says one more question. What is it? Uh, how did you feel? He said, don't ask a question. He is going to ask a question. Yeah. How, did, how did you and the other, doc, the other actors who played Doctor Who feel about Tom Baker not being with the final doctor?
main yeah, lobby. Yeah, I'll there. go back to the main lobby and do it. Okay. Oh, Otherwise, pen, I'll, I'll get a cup of tea on the way, too. That's my own private pen, man. Come on, you don't need it. My own special color of ink. Where are you going?